Yo, what is going on everyone? My name is Nick or The Notorious Fantasy and in today's video, we're going to be breaking down my week number five quarterback start or sit decisions for the 2024 fantasy football season. Going in depth through every single matchup from Thursday night football all the way up until Monday night football and telling you guys whether I believe you should start or sit the quarterbacks in every single game. But before we could get into things, I would like to ask that if you guys are new to the channel and you do end up enjoying today's video, then please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below and while you're down there whether you are new to the channel or not please make sure that you do leave a like on today's video it would help me out a ton if you want to follow me on twitter or x please do so at notorious fntsy so without further ado let's get into my week number five quarterback start or sit decisions for the 2024 fantasy football season we begin with Thursday Night Football, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at the Atlanta Falcons. Now, Baker Mayfield is going to be a start in this matchup, and Baker Mayfield has been the definition of boom or bust this season. He has had three games where he finished inside of the top five at the quarterback position, and he has had one game as the quarterback 27 up against the Denver Broncos. Well, now we have a lot more of a sample size for the Denver Broncos defense, and since a lot of quarterbacks have struggled up against them. I won't really knock Baker Mayfield too much for that. Last week up against the Eagles, he was the quarterback three, ripping them to shreds for 347 passing yards and two touchdowns with 10 rushing yards as well as an additional rushing touchdown. The Falcons defense is middle of the pack according to DVOA, so Baker should be good enough to be at minimum a top 10 quarterback in this game. For Kirk Cousins, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense has been underrated, and with Kirk Cousins still looking kind of meh, we just don't want to start him in this spot. He definitely isn't playing as sluggish as he did back in week number one, but as I've already said, this matchup definitely isn't the most ideal for Kirk Cousins, so he belongs on the bench next week. He'll probably be a start up against the Carolina Panthers. Next up, we move to the London game, the New York Jumbo Jets at the Cold Lake Minnesota Vikings. Now, I would rather go to sleep every single night with a warm pillow over starting Aaron Rodgers. Sure, I I get he has had two good games inside of the top 12 this year, but he had a disasterful performance up against the Denver Broncos this week facing one of the best defenses in the National Football League, if not the best defense in the NFL in London, where we typically see some wacky games. I definitely do not have the cojones to start Aaron Rodgers. I think eventually he will be start worthy. This is just really a matchup that is no bueno for him. For Mono Man Sam, I get that the Jets have a great defense, but sometimes you need to rock with the hot hand, right? When someone is as on fire as Sam Darnold is, I am going to continue to start them. He has been a top nine quarterback in three straight games, and the one week where he fell outside the top nine, he was the quarterback number 13. The Vikings offense getting Jordan Addison back is a huge bump for Darnold ceiling weekly, matched with his sneaky rushing upside to rush a couple of times a game and the fact that Kevin O'Connell is a offensive guru, I really believe in Sam Darnold like his name was Joe Hendry. All in all, the matchup is too good to be all over Darnold as like a top five, top eight quarterback in the rankings, but he is definitely a fringe top 12 quarterback for me on the week. Next up, we move to the Carolina Panthers at the Chicago Bears starting off the real Sunday slate, you know, because that first game in London, a little fugazi, you know, so Carolina Panthers at the Chicago Bears. Now, Andy Dalton has been a top 12 quarterback in back-to-back -back games up against the Raiders and the Cincinnati Bengals, but this will be his toughest matchup he has faced yet. Now, do I expect him to go full-on Bryce Young mode, not be able to see off the offensive line and absolutely shit the bed? No, but the Chicago Bears defense does rank top 12 in terms of DVOA, and I think they will give Andy Dalton the red rifle a bunch of issues. I still believe in Dalton, though, as a whole, and I think in better matchups than this, we'll see Andy Dalton return to form as a potential top 12 quarterback, but up against the Bears defense, I just think it is too much of a risk 
Now, speaking of risks, Caleb Williams is going to be one. Now, I'm going to list him as a start as he has continued to look better and better as the season has gone on. There are still many instances in the game, though, where Caleb Williams might have someone butt booty naked wide open and he throws the ball and he just leads them too much or he underthrows them and they just don't appear to be on the same page. And that leads to games where some of these wide receivers cough, cough, DJ Moore should have a huge game go nuclear, but the ball sails over his head. They're just not on the same page and they end up having a relatively mid performance this week up against the Panthers. I do think Caleb should have his best game yet. I'm not going to sit here and pretend like he is the safest bet on earth at the quarterback position, but he is a fine bet to be a high end quarterback too, especially since there are so many teams on by next up. We move to the Baltimore Ravens at at the Cincinnati Bengals. Now, I don't want to sound like a record, right? And I don't, uh, a record, sound like a broken record. And I don't want to truly give Lamar the Gawk Gawk 9000 special every single week because I have said this every single week of the season through the first four games. But Lamar Jackson is one of the most consistent quarterbacks in fantasy football. And it is truly incredible. Four weeks in, he has been a top nine quarterback in every single game, and he was a top six quarterback in three of four games. Even when Derrick Henry goes out and runs a train on a defense, you still see Lamar Jackson shoving his dick directly down the throat of the defense for 20 plus fantasy points. The Bengals defense is not good at all, so I do strongly believe that Lamar Jackson should be ranked inside of the top five on the week, and for me, he is going to be the quarterback one. Joe Shiesty started off the season on the wrong foot, right? He was doing that dance where it's like, put your left foot in, put your right foot out, you know what I'm talking about, and instead of going to the left, to the left, he was going to the right, right? He went the opposite direction. It was a disaster class up against the Patriots, but ever since that, he has been a top 10 quarterback in three straight games. Jamar Chase has looked great, and Higgins is starting to look a lot better. They've got Kasicki, they've got all, they got Yoshi Voss, they've got two competent running backs as well, so the offense is set up for success, and the fact that the defense sucks as much ass as they do, it leads to these games being very high scoring, which pushes, pushes Joe Burrow to throw the ball a ton deep in games. This really should be that back and forth tit for tat rock'em sock'em robots matchup that should lead to Slim Shiesty finishing inside of the top 10 at the quarterback position on the week. Next up, we move to the Miami Dolphins at the New England Deflatriates in Foxborough. Now for Jacoby Brissett, I cannot wait for the day that I get the Adam Schefter alert buzz in my phone, the Ian Rappaport alert, even though Ian Rappaport has me blocked on Twitter, that the Patriots have benched Jacoby Brissett. While I hate the Patriots as a Dolphins fan, I will shed a tear for that because Drake May could elevate the other weapons around here in New England to actually be decent for fantasy. Now, some people will say when it comes to having sex, right, after a while, missionary gets a little boring, but hey, at least that feels good. Playing Jacoby Brissett feels like you're taking Thor's hammer to your nutsack week in and week out. He has only scored over 10 points once, and that was a 10.6 fantasy point performance. The dude reeks too high heaven. Leave him on the waivers. Now, we just shit all over Jacoby Brissett, and I will be a little bit kinder to Tyler Huntley. Nick, it's because you're a Dolphins fan. Not really, right? Huntley didn't look very good against the Titans in his first start as the Dolphins quarterback, but he did get the nice bailout special if you had to start him because he ran in a touchdown. Due to his rushing upside, he could crack the top 12 at the quarterback position in any given game, but... Since Mike McDaniel is an absolute dunce, the play calling is no different as it would be if they had Tua. Now, if you could insert Mahomes, Joe Burrow, any of the great pock CJ Stroud, you bring him in here, sure, that will work. But with Tyler Huntley, that's not going to work. You need a proficient passer that has great 
timing like Tua Tonga Vailoa for this system to work. And Tyler Huntley is simply not that guy. Now, if Mike McDaniel gets in the lab, goes back to the drawing board, cooks up a better game plan for Huntley's skill set, then I believe that Huntley can succeed and that the Dolphins could torch the Patriots. But why would I believe that is going to happen? When Skyler was in, it's the same shit as with Tua being in, except for Skyler sucks ass. It's the same thing with Huntley. They act like these guys can magically have the anticipation, have the throws that Tua can make, right? We remember Tyreek Hill was wide open and Huntley couldn't hit him multiple times in that game. Now, I'm not going to sit here and shit all over Huntley. It really is Mike McDaniel's fault. Huntley can be valuable and fancy because of his legs if they figure out how to use him correctly, and they just haven't figured that out yet. Next up, we move to the Cleveland Browns at the left hands up. Who are we? The Commanders. Jaden Stormy Daniels is officially a top five lock at the quarterback position. And frankly, your opinion is, Nick, you can't rank him that high. Then I, I don't respect your opinion. I genuinely do not because I get, oh man, they're going up against the Browns defense. But this guy's been a top five quarterback in three of four games, and he is playing like the MVP of the National Football League. I understand that the Browns defense isn't some bottom of the barrel unit that they don't absolutely reek to high heaven. But with how hard in the paint the commander's offense has been going, I believe strongly that Daniels will finish inside the top five. He could rush for 50 plus yards and a touchdown in any given game, and he has been extremely accurate throwing the football. He's only had one interception on the season, and I expect another 25-plus point performance this week up against the Cleveland Browns. Now, when it comes to Deshaun Watson, he has actually been a top 18 quarterback in fantasy football every single week. But when push comes to shove, he hasn't really ever had a great game. The turnovers have still been present, and he is still yet to really have that great of a game. And if you watch him actually play, he is about as inefficient as it gets. It is truly hard to watch Deshaun Watson play football. Now, this matchup is on paper a wet dream matchup potentially, right? The commander's defense might not have the best players, but they have been playing relatively decent. So... While people might fall for the hype of Watson here, I am not coming within a 10-foot pole of Deshaun Watson. Just like if you're a masseuse, don't get close to Mr. Watson. Next up, we move to the Indianapolis Colts at the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, some people might say, Nick, it's crazy to have Anthony Richardson listed in this game. There's no way he's going to play. Well, you would have thought that Anthony Richardson wouldn't have returned to that game last week to come back in five seconds later and get whacked again, but that is what happened. AR was limited in practice on Wednesday with a hip injury, and I think that there is a potential possibility that he ends up suiting up. Now, is that the most likely scenario? Maybe, maybe not, but that is something to matter. Now, I like this matchup a ton up against the Jaguars. So if Anthony Richardson does not play, then I think Flacco moves into that fringe start type of area because Cool Joe was looking great last week. Trevor Lawrence is another one of those guys that's just a bottom of the barrel start. And while I don't want to start him <laughs> because he's literally just been straight ass, shout out Remy LaCroix, outside of last week in Houston because he did have a good game last week. This matchup against Indy is far too good for me to list him as a sit. But again, I'm not going to sit here drooling and slobbering on the knob like corn on the cob of Trevor Lawrence because he hasn't looked great. But because of the matchup, he is a fringe start if you're dealing with bye weeks at the quarterback position. Next up, we move to the Buffalo Bills at the Houston Texans. Probably everyone's most excited for game of the week. I guess the Ravens versus the Bengals is up there as well. Josh Allen has been following a pattern this season to a T. There's been four games. He was the quarterback one, quarterback 28, quarterback one, and then quarterback 28. So if that ends up repeating itself, that pattern, he'll be the quarterback one this week. The Texans defense appears to be a little bit overrated. And while the Bills just got cream pied by the Baltimore Ravens, I expect a bounce back 
for this offense. Allen has been a top of the MVP conversation as well all season, and I agree with that talking point. Now, the fact that Kolo Shakir is a little bit banged up does worry me, but they still have enough guys at least out there for Josh Allen to be fine, plus you're relying on his rushing ability as well. This matchup has the upside to be one of those good old Western shootouts. Shout out to my main man, Arthur, and I am very excited for this game to potentially lead Josh Allen to being a top three quarterback on the week. Now, before we break down CD's C.D. Stroud, like he's C.D. Lamb, C.J. Stroud, I would like to give you guys a quick word from our friends and our partner over at Underdog Fantasy. Now, if you're new to Underdog and use promo code Notorious, you will receive a first-time deposit match of up to $1,000, as well as receiving the free pick that's on your screen right now. Thursday night football, tomorrow, or maybe today, as you guys are watching this, the video comes out on Wednesday, if Kirk Cousins gets higher than half of a total yard, you match that with one of the players on the Buccaneers or one of the players in the games playing on Sunday or Monday. If both of those picks hit, you'll receive three times what you enter into your pick'em. If you do multiple other picks, then the payout will be higher. Also, if you're watching this after Thursday Night Football is kicked off, if you use promo code Notorious, you will receive a free pick very similar to the Kirk Cousins higher than half of a total yard. It will be just a different player. And you'll also receive that first time deposit bonus of up to to $1,000. So make sure you sign up using promo code Notorious on Underdog. So back on into the game, the Bills versus the Houston Texans. Now, when it comes to CJ Stroud, he is a pretty safe bet weekly to finish anywhere from quarterback six to 12. Now, his limited rushing upside does hurt his upside, but ultimately the stacked weapon core around him helps elevate his floor and his ceiling weekly. While the Buffalo Bills just got their doors blown off by the Ravens last week, like an old school FPS Russia video, I do think they have a solid defense. Ultimately, I feel good ranking Stroud inside of the quarterback 8 to 12 range every single week. Next up, we move to the Las Vegas Raiders at the Denver Broncos in Mile High. For Gardner Minshew, Devontae Adams wants out. He wants that trade. Maybe he'll be a Jet. So let me know down below in the comment section. Do you guys think he's going to be a Jet? Dealer? Maybe goes to the Commanders? Maybe a Saint? Let me know down below in the comment section. But... Without Adams, who is Gardner's best weapon by a quarter mile, not even close, right? I like Jacoby Myers, but he can't even hold Devontae Adams' jockstrap. Gardner wasn't putting up good numbers in general when Adams was out there. Now, without him, it's not like he's magically going to get better. He was the wide receiver, or wide receiver, he was the quarterback 32 last week. There are 32 fucking quarterbacks in the NFL. He was the quarterback 32 without Adams. And with the Broncos defense looking better than Samala Hayek's rack, I think Gardner Minshew finishes as the quarterback 28 or worse. Bo Nix of the Denver Broncos threw his first touchdown in the NFL last week. Nice round of applause for him in MetLife up against the Jumbo Jets, leading the team in a super high-scoring game, right? Everyone remembers that game from last week. It was raining. It was super high-scoring. 10-9 win for the Denver Broncos. Once Nix puts it all together, I do think, due to his rushing upside, that he could end up being a guy we talk about as being a weekly starter. But until I actually see that consistency out of him, there's no reason to play him. Next up, we move to the Arizona Cardinals at the San Francisco 49ers. Now, this Cardinals team has been all over the place this season. They have had some very high highs where they are top of the mountain, Kilimanjaro, up against the Rams. They lay haymakers into the Rams. The Rams didn't even stand a chance, but then they have games that are the lowest of lows, like up against the Commanders last week, where the Commanders had Kyler not even playing his correct game. He only had one rush attempt in that game when he averages five rushing attempts a game, and he only threw for 142 yards, which was his lowest mark on the season. Now, again, the Commanders' defense is sneaky good, but he also faces a tough matchup this week against the 49ers in Santa Clara. So I'm not going to say I'm in full-on panic mode. Wee-woo, wee-woo, fucking DEFCON 1. But I'm also not going to sit here and say that I'm just not worried at all. I'm, I'm a little bit worried. He is still a top-eight quarterback for me. 
but he is much closer to number eight than number one. Big cock Brock Purdy has looked like average size cock Brock so far this season. Outside of his surgical top five performance up against the Rams in week three, he has been just m -m -m mid. With the Avengers back, though, getting Kittle and Debo back, we should see Purdy be consistently better. Now, they're still missing Captain America, Christian McCaffrey, so that's not great either, but Jordan Mason's fine. The Cardinals' defense has more holes than a colander, so I do think that Brock Purdy should have hop back onto the saddle this week as a top eight quarterback. Next up, we move to the Packers going up against the LA Rams. And if you notice when talking about Kyler and when talking about Brock Purdy, quarterbacks eviscerate the Rams defense. Jordan, love me tender, love me sweet is going to be a start. Now, last week was a tale of two halves for Jordan Love up against the Vikings last week. In the first half, he looked like pre-LASIK Jameis Winston throwing dimes to the defense. And in the second half, he dialed in, he was locked in, and he was unstoppable. Now, of course, you can argue that the Vikings defense eased up, they softened up, they weren't trying as hard because they were up by roughly a gazillion points, but still, Love looked great in the second half. He finished as the quarterback two with 389 passing yards, four touchdowns and three INTs going up against a Rams defense that is ripe for the taking. I do believe that we'll get yet another huge showing out of Jordan Love as a top five quarterback for Matthew Stafford. It is simple. Until Puka and Cooper Cup return, there is virtually zero reason to play Matthew Stafford. The red zone upside is all sucked away from Kyron Williams, and he's only thrown a touchdown in two of four games this year. And while he is still playing solid. It's not like Stafford looks trash. Playing solid doesn't always mean you get fantasy points, right? Gardner Minshew, it's not like he is really, really bad. I mean, he's not great, but he's good enough to win games for the Raiders. But that same thing with Deshaun Watson, but it just doesn't mean that you get a lot of fantasy points. He hasn't been a top 20 quarterback since week one, and against a Packers defense that I believe will actually show up on Sunday, unlike last week up against the Vikings, there is zero reason to play Matty Snapback. Next up, we move to the New York football giants at the Seattle Seahawks, the final game before we break down the Monday night football and Sunday night football game. So if you guys have enjoyed just far, make sure you guys Hit that subscribe button down below. Hit it with that Poetan Alex Pajeda left hook. And make sure you guys leave a like on today's video as well. Very nice. I like. So for Daniel Jones, he is always live to just randomly throw for two touchdowns with zero interceptions and run in a touchdown and have a jolly good show. But that type of performance, I don't think is very likely up against Seahawks, especially being more than likely without Malik Neighbors. Now, again, don't bet your house that Neighbors is out, but I personally think it's more likely that he misses. Now I get that people will say, the Seahawks defense is Fugazi, but they also faced an offense in the Lions that was just fiending to have that big game. You knew they had the, the big game inside of them. And also, the Seahawks were missing multiple pieces defensively last week. Danny Fumbles is a clear sit for me. Gito Smith has been cooking like he has fucking ratatouille inside of his helmet telling him what to do. Three games inside the top eight, and he certainly can replicate that this week up against the Giants defense. OC offensive coordinator Ryan Grubb has completely shape-shifted this offense into a well-oiled machine with DK Metcalf, JSN, and Lockett all looking great. There is zero reason to believe that Geno is going to take a step back. Clear top 12 quarterback for me on the week. Next up, we move to, because you waited all day for Sunday night, the Dallas Cowboys at the Pittsburgh Steelers. I understand for Dak Prescott, right? Cool Joe Flacco had a great showing last week against the Steelers, but that's not a word you've heard or a grouping of words that you haven't heard before, right? We know Joe Flacco is good up against the Steelers, but I believe the Steelers' defense still has one of the better defenses in the league. Now, that shouldn't lead Prescott to completely shit the bed, but I also am not excited to start him this week. He is a high-end quarterback, too, for me due to his ability to play football, right? He's a competent quarterback, and due to the fact that CeeDee Lamb is so good, but he is far from an ideal start. So he's in that high-end quarterback, two range. Justin Fields. 
team has been really relying on him more throwing the ball recently. He has thrown the ball more than 30 times in back-to-back -back showings, and that has led to Fields being a top-12 quarterback in both games. Last week, he was the quarterback one in Indy with 312 passing yards and a touchdown with 55 rushing yards and two rushing touchdowns. So over 350 all-purpose yards and three total touchdowns. Now, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that Justin Fields is one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. Justin Fields is a quarterback that can make egregious decisions, but with Mike Tomlin and surprisingly Arthur Smith, they have really carved out a great game plan for Fields, which involves letting him use his legs and making sure that he's not making a bunch of crazy, insane decisions in the game. If you remember, like, for the Bears, he would just throw the ball up in a triple coverage like you're playing jackpot as a kid, right? Close your eyes and let that pick a guy and let it fly. Shout out Dan Marino. That's what Justin Fields was doing. But now he is a lot more calculated. Again, I don't think Justin Fields is one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL, but being one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL isn't necessarily what you actually need to be a great fantasy quarterback because rushing upside is so important. The Cowboys defense also looks overrated and in my opinion, I really think that Fields should be ranked as a top six to top 10 quarterback this week. I honestly don't know why. Like, what does Mike Tomlin owe to Russell Wilson? Like, at the end of every week, they're like, oh, we, we don't have a, a locked and loaded quarterback one. Like, okay, buddy, we're definitely going to just give the keys magically back to Russell Wilson once he's fully healthy. Okay, we all believe that, right? Now we got Monday Night Football. Now, Patrick Mahomes has fallen into the area where you actually don't want to start him. Um, he's going to be listed as a start because he's going to finish anywhere from like quarterback 12 to, to 16 or 18 every week, but his upside is severely capped by the fact that we've clearly seen he doesn't look amazing. He's been turning the ball over like his name was Tua, and he has yet to have a game this season inside of the top 12. And the fact that he lost his best wide receiver weapon in Rashi Rice because Patrick Mahomes decided to turn into fucking Ray Lewis and hit stick Rice's knee. Things aren't looking all fine and dandy in Kansas City. Now, they'll still probably win this game and they'll still probably have a decent showing, but Mahomes' upside is very clearly limited. Most people are probably just stuck playing him, but to me, he no longer belongs inside of the top 12 at the quarterback rankings for fantasy. Derek Carr... I'm not ready to yet declare that Derek Carr's week one and two performance was some Mickey Mouse insanity run, but he has fallen outside of the top 24th quarterback position over the last two weeks. But, and this is a big butt shout out to my girl Summer Ray, against an amazing Chiefs defense, while I don't think it's fully over for Carr, and I think he's better than what he showed over the last two weeks. There are brighter matchups ahead. You know, week seven on, he's after this, he's got the Bucks, then the Broncos. So that's not great, but the matchups do look a little bit sweeter after that. I think he should remain on your bench for the next couple of weeks, but things will get better for Mr. Cars. Thank you guys all so much for watching today's video. If you did have enjoying, make sure you guys do hit that subscribe button down below like it owes you some money. Make sure you leave a like on today's video. It would help me out a ton. If you want to follow me on Twitter or X, please do so at NotoriousFNTSY. And if you want to check out my weekly rankings as well as get an answer to any question you guys might have, make sure you guys check out the Patreon. Link in the video description for $7.50 a month. I love you guys all so much. Hope you have a great one. And as always, good boy!